What is good, baby? We had to whip out the young shirt. Oh! I just gotta go ahead and say, what's up with all this Nintendo Switch slander I've been seeing? Every time I look up this game in particular, I just be seeing, ah, it's on that Switch. It's poop. Ah, yo, I wanna do. That's all I be seeing, bro. The Switch slander is getting out of control. So. As always, y'all already know me, this your boy QKG. Y'all already know how much I, I love that Nintendo Switch. THAT NINTENDO SWITCH! So today we're gonna be reviewing Sonic Frontiers for the Nintendo Switch. I beat this game in about 25 hours or so. I tried to soak in all its meaty juices as much as I could. Um, this game was definitely one of my favorite games of 2022. I did have some gripes about it. Um, but ultimately, this game definitely, I feel like, needs a lot of attention. So without wasting no more time, my dogs! Let's jump in this review. Boy! You know how much I love the Nintendo Switch! Sonic game has what's called open zone. This is what you would call an open world if it was mixed with the Sonic realm because you're gonna have those zones back in like Sonic Adventure where Sonic's running through like a whole ass different world or city or some shit. And literally throughout that area, you're gonna have rails, you're gonna have bouncy buttons, you're gonna have all the different types of ring button shits that you're gonna end up having to hit throughout your journey. So when you first boot up Sonic Frontiers on your Nintendo Switch, you're gonna get blessed with some of the best music Sega had to bless them eardrums with. I'm, I'm telling you, it's some really good music. But when you first boot up the game, you're definitely gonna notice that it's in that Switch uh, realm when I would say like think of like a Witcher 3 in a way where it's definitely like a game where it's a multi-platform game but it's definitely feel like it's been if you're in the PC realm it feels like the graphics have been turned down on like low settings it feels like it's a mix of maybe low and medium depending on the areas you're in um, but Sonic Frontiers as far as like the grass foliage don't expect to see a lot of it you're gonna see a little bit here and there um, but as far as like the textures go, their textures don't get too muddy, but I will definitely say there have been some areas since you're going to be going very, very fast. There have been a few times and occasions I have seen like an area kind of have, you know, a texture pop up here and there. But it wasn't anything to where I got stuck in the rock or I had like some goofy ass glitch or something and it hindered my gameplay experience. And it actually re rendered in much faster than I expected. Um, as far as technical issues go, um... I was expecting to see a whole lot more because this is a open zone game and you're going to be running around a whole lot so I was expecting to see a whole lot more um, technical issues but surprisingly I actually did not run into many crashes throughout my playthrough I didn't run any game uh, breaking bugs of any sort um, I actually ended up finding the fishing spot at the dead end and that actually helped me max out my character um, and it has some of the best dark I'm telling you Sega I don't know what they did with this music, brother, but this music, I don't know why I went on Randy Savage. And they had some Lofi in there when you're actually in the fishing spot. Dude, you could spend all day in there. Um, And I actually found it on, uh, like, a playlist of it. So I'm like, dog, I'm like, Sega, you know they shit. Um, the boss fights in the game, they utilize some of the best music, like I said. Um, and those boss fights get... <sighs> I'm, I'm gonna get to that in a minute. Let me get back on track. Think of Sonic and Breath. Of, uh, think of Sonic and Breath of the Wild formula. That's exactly what this game is. Um, and I've been noticing that with like games like Immortals: Phoenix Rising, kind of took that same formula where we're gonna have an open world, and there's gonna be little puzzles or little different areas throughout the map that open up the map for you to view. Because well, of course, it's just like Breath of the Wild where you're dropped in on a zone and you're in this weird world but of course you don't know where the hell you're at so as you're progressing throughout that open zone there's going to be a bunch of different puzzles for you to do and i will be honest with you the puzzle not that difficult but you will jump into one or two and you're like what the hell do you want me to do biggest addition to this game that no other sonic game really had the fact that sonic has combat so all my devil may cry hands all my bayonet hands if you love use some good combat you can actually get pretty spicy in this game um the skill tree is, I would say, is an okay size. I wish it would be a little bit bigger, but I'm not upset with the amount. If that shit makes sense, we do. But the whole fact is, they have a decent amount 
that is in their upgrading uh, skill tree for you to actually utilize throughout your combat uh, enjoyment. Um, other than that, as much as like I said, I was somebody who played a lot of Devil May Cry and a lot of hack and slash games, I was getting very spicy with them shits, boy. Um, I do love that little dodge, like, kind of boost move where Sonic goes all over the place, and then it's similar to, um, it's kind of like he gets a fury rush in a way where if you have a consistent combo that's building up this meter, it goes into, like, this hyper rush mode, and Sonic get the fucking you up! It is crazy, bro. Seeing Sonic in this way is much better in my opinion because I was like, yeah, he jumps into a ball, blah, 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 he just hits people with a ball, but actually giving him combat... Nuts! Absolutely nuts. Bonkers, brother. Amazing. Y'all, dog is heat! Is heat! So each zone is gonna have the Chaos Emeralds on them. And then the only way for you to unlock Chaos Emeralds is that you have to actually use these keys to unlock them. The only way to actually get those keys is that you actually go to, go to these portals that look like these old kind of stone shrines. And you have to put in this gear shift key thing that you only get from actually exploring or defeating enemies. And so those shrines will actually suck you into what's called a cyberspace. And that cyberspace shit is actually like the classic Sonic gameplay where you complete the level in the fastest time. You got to get all these red tokens, get a certain amount of red, uh, get a certain amount of rings, and then also complete the level in the fastest time. Um, I will say getting the S's on a good majority of them are actually pretty, I'm not going to say easy, but I did get an S like, um, damn near everything the difficulty of those cyberspace runs they vary but i will definitely say i was actually getting s's pretty decently well mainly because i'm a vet out here boy but i will definitely say it didn't seem as crazy difficult but there were a few that i had to retry a bunch just because i was getting my ass just worked the cool thing is is once you complete something like let's say if i get all the red coins and then the next thing i gotta get is all the rings then the good thing is if i've already gotten all the red coins of my previous run of it then i just gotta focus on getting the rings that time so it's not like you got to do everything each time in each single go which is actually pretty forgiving now, the good part of the game is where you get all the chaos emeralds and of course that means you gotta go fight that big bad boss boy i said bro this is where shit gets crazy so when you get into these final boss fights and you're in supersonic mode dog that music like i said is blessing them eardrums boy the ble the music is blaring the music is great the boss fights are very unique I will definitely say there was one out of the bunch where I think you had to like parry a couple of the beams or something like that. I did not like that one that much. Supersonic fights were definitely very fun. You had some heat ass music in the background and then Supersonic even when he, um, you know, of course like his moves are going to have their own little special secret sauce to them. Um, it's just hype. And then just to see that last cutscene, them QTEs where you mashing buttons and everything is hype. The way Sega did these, the whole formula for the game, I would definitely say is like one, I, I, dog, it's already been DLC announced, but I don't know going forward what the formula is going to be, but you just went full on Breath of the Wild, and I loved every single bit of it, bro. Um, so as far as the game goes, man, like, I had, I had literally zero technical issues, I was able to complete the game, I'm doing a hard mode run right now, I never had the game crash on me. Game is actually, even for a Switch game, beautiful. If you want to look at that boy in the palm of your hand, there's some definitely some pretty majestic times, but at the same time, you ain't going to see a lot of foliage. You might get some texture pop-ups. It's definitely going to have that low PC looking feel to it, but overall, the game is definitely enjoyable. So, I'm going to give Sonic Frontiers... On the QKG scale, I forgot. We used to say it was like games were decent, hot fuego boy. We're gonna do some different shit here. So I'm actually gonna use number scaling, but I'm gonna try to keep it as simple as possible. I'm just gonna go to five here. I gotta get this game a solid four out of five. Only just be no fuck that. I'm gonna give it a four point five out of five. Aside from a few bosses I didn't like, other than that, I really enjoyed this game. Shit, I'm still enjoying the game on my second run so as far as whatever dlc these guys got placed in line uh if you have not already there was like some newsletters that you can sign up for like i got the sonic adventure 2 shoes in this shit that they just gave you for free so sega was actually paying attention to a lot of people who were supporting the game but i just could not go through with this switch slander boy the shit was making no sense I was just like, bro, I get y'all, like, y'all happy with these PS5s and Xbox Series Xs and shit, but, dog, it's a handheld, chill out, <laughs> like, it's crazy, so, uh, other than that, man, I've been, like I said, I've been enjoying the game, I'm giving it a 4.5 out of 5, 
a very hot, solid game. Aside from the issues that I have with it, other than that, I enjoy this shit. So if you ever see this boy on sale, bro, with the quickness, cop that bitch. If it's a solid 50% off and it's like 30 bucks, that's a steal, bro. If you go anything lower than that, you got blessed by the game in heavens, God. That's what happened, because other than that, usually Sega or like Ubisoft, they go half. But still, look for that boy on sale if it ever goes on sale and cop that shit while you can. Boo! Alright. So, I think that's all I got to say about Sonic Frontiers on the Nintendo Switch, as far as even just me talking about the game, uh, giving you a good idea, and giving you solid Switch gameplay, and also my experience of the game. I wanted to soak the game in, I got it ever since it came out at launch, uh, I just took forever reviewing the shit. As always guys, I would love to thank you guys for tuning in, this is your boy QKG, and peace out. I don't know what the hell this is, but peace. Wait, we're not, oh, I was about to say, we ain't done yet? Yeet this man! He ain't ready for you, bro. You eat this man. Okay, he he kind of did. Give him the final yeet. Yo, he's unarmed. Oh, you about to? Oh, that shit broken. He just busted. Uh, uh, Sonic, what the fuck you doing? I thought you broke it. Uh, 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 this nigga picked it up. Excuse me, sir. You just trucks to freeze it, this nigga. You just freeze it. Okay. Oh wow. I'm not gonna lie. That was actually kind of fucking cool.